Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis with a slightly different video today. Um, as you know, I'm a 40k channel, but I also play Warhammer Fantasy. And I've started to compare the two systems in my head, like how does this work and how does the other one work. And I thought it would be an interesting video to compare the two. Sort of like go phase by phase, how the games work, and just deliver an overall judgement on how I feel the game works. So let's start obviously at the top of the game with um, army selection. 40k uses, as we know, the Force Organization chart, or you can throw it out the window and play on Bound, but we're going to focus on Force Org just for the purpose of this, where you are allowed a set number of choices from each section. Um, this means that there are no points limits on each section, so as you can pick exactly what units you want, and you can really block that one section with points and then just go skimping on the rest. You have minimum requirements, but again, these have no points limits, and so you can just take a bare bones HQ, two troops, and then spam out the rest. However, it does limit you on how many units from each section you can actually take as well. So, it's a good thing in that you have more freedom in points of what units you can take. So you can have a really big unit in a non-troop um, section, but you're only limited in how many units you can take. You're only allowed three elites, three fast attack, and so on. By the other contrast, there is fantasy. Fantasy works on a percentage-based system. So you take the points cost of your army, so 2,000 point game, which is typical, and then you say... 25% must be core, which is like your troops. You're allowed to then spend up to 25% on lords, or heroes, or special, or rare. And it's quite a simple system. Although it does have its limit in that you are forced to take 25% core, which in um, horde armies can be kind of tricky, and in elite armies can be just as annoying to get enough models down to scrape the points together. Plus, in elite armies particularly, the percentage can be really limiting, i.e. if I run high elves I have to make a choice between having full command on two units or running three units in my special section. And that's quite irritating. So you are limited in what units you can take, but not because of um, limits in the slot, but because of points in the slot. Which system is better? I don't know. I mean, Force Org is nice and easy to put a list together. Fantasy you have to do a bit more thinking about it. Uh, in terms of making a balanced list, Fantasy actually does better because having points allocated to each section means that each army is bringing roughly equivalent, whereas having slots um, means that certain units can be spammed, which would be impossible if they were really expensive in Fantasy. Uh, moving on, movement phase. Uh, 40k is very easy for a movement phase. You move 6 inches, or you're going through terrain, so you're all 2d6 to keep the highest, or you've got certain things that allow you to move faster, in which case you have like jump packs and bikes which allow you to go 12 inches. Nice and easy. Not much more to say about the movement phase. Uh, fantasy is in a slightly different order. You charge in the movement phase, first of all. So you have to resolve charges in the movement phase, which means there's a lot more tactical thinking has to go into whether to launch a charge or not, because if you charge, you have no option to shoot that unit or magic that unit, apart from bless augments and hexes. Whereas in 40k, you obviously have a little bit more freedom, although you do need to be careful with your movement, not to leave yourself open to a charge if things go wrong. Fantasy, you also have to bear in mind um, forward, rear, and side arcs. Um, so you have to bear in mind where your unit's going to end up when you finish moving it and where it's most vulnerable. And in fantasy, you have movement values. So um, a man moves four inches. A stumpy little dwarf moves three inches. Or whereas a graceful elf moves five inches and you have to bear all these in mind particularly when you add the march move which allows you to move at double speed and obviously then cavalry have like movement eight or movement nine um some infant flying units have movement 10 and so on so there are a lot of different variables in each um army every army book has a different movement value which is something you don't see in 40k again 40k is a very simplified system in my opinion compared to fantasy which is why it's more played um, moving on, we have the magic phase, or the psychic phase, because of the introduction of the psychic phase I can compare these two side by side. The magic phase, to some people, is seen as game breaking in fantasy, it is too powerful, it can just swing the game on one or two spells. And there are spells in 40k and in, fan in fantasy particularly that can really change a game, such as a well placed Occam's Mind Razor, the Purple Son of Zerus. Um, a nice lucky chain lightning can really change the look of a battlefield and just wipe the floor with half an army. So the magic phase can be very broken, however the dispel is quite easy to do. If you've got a high level wizard in your army and or a couple of wizards that allow you to channel, 
you have a good chance of being able to shut half of your opponent's magic phase down and you have the dispel scroll for 25 points. So the magic phase is very good if you can get a hold of it, however it is relatively easy to shut down. 40k psychic phase is brand spanking new and on first glance it's a dumbed down magic phase, i.e. you still roll a certain number of dice, you still have warp charge points instead of um, magic dice, power dice, you, um, but it doesn't affect by mastery level and it's just four pluses instead of casting values and deny the witches on six pluses. Now obviously this makes deny the witch a lot harder to do than to cast meaning that dispel um, is a lot harder to do and therefore is a lot less breaking. However, some of the spells or the powers in 40k can be pretty breaking. We've already seen a lot of people abuse um, demonology, malefic demonology with all the summoning rules. Um, Biomancy has received a massive buff in iron arm and warp speed and possibly in endurance as well. So there's been a lot of boosts to psychic powers and Deny the Witch has probably got better in the fact you can throw more dice at it but I'm still on the fence. I haven't played a game with the new psychic phase yet. I'm hopefully going to get my hands on a rule book and I'll play a game and try and use the new psychic phase. So I think on uh, power it goes to fantasy but on balance I'd probably just give it to 40k because the psychic phase whilst there are powerful powers most of them are now warp charge 2 and so very tricky to get off without um, risking a perils which is terrifying. Perils looks terrifying. However there are obviously some spells such as Malefic Demonology which could be abused to bleep. Shooting. Again 40k shooting is nice and simple. You have a BS and then if it's anything that requires snapshots you'll BS 1. That's it. And rolling to wound it's 4s if it's equal, 5s if your strength is 1 less, 6s if your strength is 2 less, 3s if your strength is 1 higher, 2s if your strength is 2 higher and that just carries on and possibly you will get to a point where you can't wound. But that's like um, strength 1 against 7 is 6, 2 against 7. It may even be 1 against 7 now. So it's very rare to find a weapon that can't wound. Armor saves are non-modifiable except for AP values. Uh, you have the invulnerable save, you have the cover save which gets stripped quite easily nowadays. The amount of ignores covers out there is amazing. And then you have feel no pain. Fantasy is again a little trickier because there are a lot of modifiers such as if you move um, you are minus one BS. If your opponent is in cover, they don't get a cover save. You have minus one BS. Depending on cover, it could be minus two BS, um, and so on. So there are a lot more modifiers to bear in mind, and you also have to bear in mind that from strength four upwards, armor saves are reduced. So strength four minus one, strength five minus two, and so again, fantasy is a little bit more tricky to learn. It's still an easy enough system, it's just rolling d6s and hoping for the right results. You just have to remember all the modifiers. There aren't. There's about four modifiers to hit, and then it's just the strength modifiers to saves. The other difference is that you take ward saves and armor saves. So you take your armor, and if you fail it, you take your ward. Or if you don't have an armor, you then take your ward. Which is um, better and worse because, um, well, it's actually better all round because you're getting a chance to save it with your armor. However, the ward saving fantasy is generally not as good as the invulnerable saving 40k. It's very, very difficult to find anything better than a 5 plus ward or a 4 plus ward at pretty much best. It's very, very rare to find a 3 plus ward. Whereas 3 plus and 2 plus invulnerables appear quite a lot. Um, so in terms of um, realism, I'd probably give it to fantasy because there are a lot more modifiers in fantasy that make it feel more realistic. However, 40k is the easiest system to learn and therefore the easiest system to play. Then there comes Assault. Now, um, the charge mechanic in Fantasy is in the movement phase, whereas 40k is in the assault phase. They both work in pretty much the same way. 2d6 to charge, however, in Fantasy you add your movement, which of course you can't do in 40k. Uh, you then have the Overwatch, Stand and Shoot mechanic. Stand and Shoot is just minus 1 BS, Overwatch is BS1. So Stand and Shoot is stronger, however, Overwatch, um, there's more powerful guns generally being fired. Um, then you have... Fight the combat, this is the same in both systems, so it's WS against WS, strength against toughness, armor saves, invulnerable saves, whatever. And remove casualties. That's easy. Where it gets, um, oh, and then there's challenges as well, which work in exactly the same way now, as in wounds spill over onto the unit. Well, in fantasy they count towards combat resolution for every extra wound. In 40k apparently they're going to spill onto the unit. So that's pretty powerful, and I think the 40k system is slightly more realistic and probably a better system. 
Uh, then it comes to calculating close combat result. 40k is very, very easy. It's just whoever calls the most wounds wins. And then you have leadership test modifiers and then so on. Fantasy, you've got a lot more calculations to do. Um, if you have... <laughs> oh, my brother. Um, you have charge modifiers, you have ranks, you have banners, you have where the attack's coming from, as in if there isn't a flank attack or a rear attack, you get bonuses. Charging has a plus one bonus. Banner is plus one bonus. Battle standard is another plus one bonus. And ranks for every rank of five, you get a plus one bonus. And it all stacks up to whoever's got the most. And then you add unsaved wounds on top of that. So the results can go spiraling, particularly in multiple combats. Whereas it's just head to head, it's just wounds pretty much. And then you have the break test or the morale check. 40k has the sweeping advance, which is just roll off, add initiative, um, attacker wins or equal, unit is dead, if not, unit falls back, and then winner consolidates. Fantasy, you have the break test, which can be modified to be steadfast if you have more ranks than your opponent, and they're not flanking or rearing you. Um, then you have the pursuit move, which is slightly trickier, as in your opponent, it, let's say you won, your opponent will run, no matter what, you have to choose, you take a leadership test if you wish to hold, and you don't pursue and you let them go, or you have to roll 2d6, and if your score beats them, you catch them and you run them down. But then you could end up with your unit being pulled out of position, and that's the risk. So again, fantasy requires a little bit more tactical thinking. Um, that's the mainstay. The other thing is the missions. Um, 40k has obviously been buffed with the Maelstrom of War missions, but they all revolve around tactical objectives. And the Eternal War missions um, are all pretty similar. They're in the case of taking objectives, with the exception of the relic, which is one objective which you can move, uh, big guns and scouring, and an extra twist, Emperor's Will, and um, the other three, Emperor's Will, um, what's it called? Purge the Alien and Crusade have been around under different names for a long time. Then you've got the three deployments, and that's it. Uh, Fantasy only has six missions, but they're all completely different. You have the basic game, you have um, phased reinforcements with diagonal deployments, you have um, hor the vertical table, the long table edges are barred off and you work across the board, you have um, killing banners winning you the game, and then you have a defend the building mission. There is a sixth mission and my brain can't remember it and I've loaned out my fantasy rulebook to my friend so he can sort of get his head around the new rulebook. So I think in terms of variety you'll get more out of 40k, but in terms of between each mission there's more variety in my opinion in fantasy. It's because I don't I'm going to get a different mission every time I play fantasy in 40k. Most of the missions are quite similar, as in the scouring and big guns are basically the same thing. They're just twists on Crusade, which is just a buffed version of the Emperor's Will, which is, yeah, I just think they're quite similar to each other. Of course, the new tactical objective missions may be new, but I haven't had a chance to get the new book and have a look at them yet. So, in summary, in terms of complexity and realism, I give the point to fantasy. Fantasy is trickier, which, and it makes you think a lot more. I like having to think. My head works in maths calculations, and so that's the sort of system I enjoy playing. However, if I want to pick up and play a game, I will play 40k every time. I can bring my stuff, put it down, roll a mission, go. Of course, I'll have to write a list, but that's a lot easier to do than it is in fantasy because I'm not doing lots of million calculations, and the points cost are normally in multiples of five, whereas in fantasy, they could be anything. They could be like four, nine, 16. It could be any number. So, complexity and... Balance, because fantasy is regarded as a very balanced system. Fantasy. Uh, pick up and play. Fun. Variety. Multi K. So it just depends on what appeals to you guys. Do you prefer a game that's um, externally balanced, that um, makes you do a lot more processing, or would you just rather have a game where you can bring your stuff, put it down and go? Which is what 40K will do for you. And it all depends on people's taste. So let me know in the comment section what you think of 40k and fantasy, which system you prefer, if you play both, which do you prefer to play, if you used to play one but now play the other, you could explain why, if you used to play both and now drop one, possibly why, or if you're new to the system, or just play one system, just let me know what you think of it. Um, as I said, uh, the comment section is open for you guys, uh, I will try and get back to most of you in the comment section, uh, I'll be on Twitter, at Tactical Imperial, so you can contact me there. Um, so thank you for watching, my name is Michael and I will see you again.